Today I'm going to share with you our experience analyzing port zero traffic in the wild. So you might wonder why port zero? Well, almost 30 years ago, RFC 1340 has reserved port number zero for both UDP and TCP. However, today in a large European IXP, we see 720 terabytes of traffic using port number zero in one week. This made us curious and we wanted to investigate it further. And this is what we actually did. So we looked at the IXP data containing IP fixed flows. We observed a significant number of packets having both source port and destination port equal to zero in both UDP and TCP. Most of these packets contained payload and they set TCP flags to zero. So we decided to contact IXP operators and they confirmed that their flow exporters actually zero out missing UDP or TCP headers in non-initial fragments. And they also agreed that packet fragmentation is possibly responsible for port zero traffic in this data. So in the IXP, packet fragmentation seem to be responsible. However, we wanted to see whether we have other causes for port zero traffic in the wild. And in the IXP, we didn't have full packet header and we needed to take a look at other data sources. So we took a look at Mavi dataset. This dataset spans over multiple years. And the good thing about Mavi is that we have full packet, full, full packet header information plus some amount of payload. So we classified payloads seen in port zero traffic using libproto-ident. And in the plot, you see that the y-axis shows number of packets and the x-axis shows year. If you take a look at the plot, you see in 2008, we have the BitTorrent as the most prominent application using port zero. While in 2012, we have DNS. In some other year, we have also other applications. So applications using port zero change over time. However, if you take a second look to the plot, you see that the dark blue line, which shows BitTorrent, is actually contributing to multiple years. So BitTorrent is a constant contributor to port zero traffic in different years in this data set. Now in this plot, we don't see packets without any payload, while they make up a high fraction of the packets in the port zero traffic. So we wanted to investigate it further with looking at other packet headers. This is why we took a look into the TCP control flags and TCP streams. We found that a large fraction of the TCP streams are one way. And among those that were two-way, we categorized TCP streams into four important categories, namely scan to close port, scan to open port, no sin, and not scan. Scan to close port is when the client sends sin and receives reset act, while scan to open port is where the client sends sin but receives sin act. Then the client sends reset act. No sin is where the client doesn't send any sin or we don't capture any sin. And not scan is where we see sin in the stream, but there are other combinations of flags. We don't see any sin act or reset act in these streams. So if you take a look at the plot, you see TCP stream categories by year, showing on the Y axis number of streams and on the X axis years. In this plot, you see the light blue line bars actually are the most prominent ones and these shows scan to close ports. So a major fraction of two-way streams are scans to close ports. Now if you take a second look you see that the dark blue lines are also there showing scan to open ports are also contributing to port zero traffic in Mavi dataset. If you take a look at 2009, 2020, 2008, you see different fractions of port zero traffic um, being scanned to open port. So we wanted to make sure whether we have open port zero in the wild. And this is why we did active measurements. 
we wanted to confirm that there are hosts with open port 0 in the wild or not. So we analyzed responsiveness of IP addresses to port 0 probes using ZMAP. We sent probes to both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses both in UDP and TCP. We found no responsive IP address to IPv6 UDP probes and most of the responses were in TCP compared to UDP. Now take a look at this plot. This plot shows the distribution of number of ASs containing responsive IP addresses to port 0 probes. On the y-axis you see the ECDF and on the x-axis you see number of ASs. This plot shows that more than 40% of the responses come from only one AS and more than 70% of the responses come from 10 ASs. So there are actually open ports zero in the wild, but they are not evenly distributed. This might indicate that some of the networks actually filter out port zero traffic. But the distribution of responsive IP addresses are still uneven. That said, we have actually analyzed different causes for port zero existence. Fragmentation seemed to be responsible for port zero traffic in the IXP. BitTorrent was also partly contributing to port zero traffic in Mavi dataset. Scanning was also another contributor. Now in the Mavi dataset, we also saw scan to open ports, which made us to do active measurements to see whether we have open ports in the wild. And we found that there are actually open port zero in the wild, but the distribution of the responsive IP addresses to port zero probes were uneven. Finally, we performed periodic port zero active measurements, the results of which are available on our website. Thank you very much for your attention. With that, I conclude my talk and take questions.